All right, so uh, the, the Cloud Adopters Toolkit. I mean, I know each of the four of you talk to cloud customers a lot. I mean, as you, as you talk to folks getting on board with cloud computing, what, what's the biggest frustration, what's the biggest hang-up that people are, are dealing with in terms of their, their tools? You know, a company goes out and they purchases, purchases a uh, infrastructure as a service deployment. You know, it doesn't solve all their problems. You know, what, what, what's a big thing they're running into right off the bat? Uh, Paul, what do you see out there in the field? Okay, sure. Um, I'll, I know we've got a great set of panelists today, and I know they're each going to give us some, some good points. Um, I'll give you one that's fairly broad, but it's kind of the overall topic of management. You know, people go and get their infrastructure as a service cloud, um, and not everything they necessarily need to, to run it and manage it and monitor it uh, is, is built in. So we're going to hear some about some great tools um, from the over, other folks. But I think the, the one that I see missing tends to be the ability to manage multiple clouds, uh, the ability to manage not only multiple clouds but multiple types, so public, private, and hybrid, and the ability to integrate your existing on-premises IT with your, your clouds. And, and again, that's multiple. So it's this, this whole concept of having uh, management tools, and again, that's that's you know, managing the infrastructure, managing the applications, managing pat patches, um, getting performance insights, uh, doing capacity management, spending management, all these different things, um, having these management capabilities so that they work in your cloud and your existing environment. Mm -hmm. Sharon, what, what do you see hanging people up about um, the, the cloud deployments? What, what sort of problems do people most run into? So it's pretty much in line with what uh, Paul already uh, already said. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the challenge that we see is everything related to predictability in, uh, in cost, uh, consumption, and, and the visibility of how fast and how agile could you be when you, when you, you know, migrate your application to the, to the cloud, uh, specifically in hybrid cloud deployment. You know, we've started with, uh, with Amazon Web Services back in 2012. Uh, we then grew up and, and support the Amazon tools and then Google, but then we've started hearing from our clients, which are mainly enterprises and mature SaaS companies that are looking for solutions to manage their hybrid cloud deployments, um, specifically fast-growing uh, OpenStack distribution, but not, not only OpenStack, but also VMware, to have an holistic view that allows you to, uh, to have a multidimensional view of your uh, the different key performance indicators that are, you know, cost, performance, others. Could be also, by the way, compliance, SLA, uh, business continuity, and disaster recovery. You know, you talked about predictability. I think that people run into that. I mean, on an on-demand on situation, the, their bill may or may not be the same every month. Do you, do you see people, uh, you know, panicking like, oh, oh suddenly our bill is, is X amount higher than it was three, three months ago. What's going on? You know, it didn't used to be this way. So yeah, so so billing is one one aspect. I would I would actually go you know a few steps back. Uh, w when you look at public cloud in general, uh, everything related to consumption in public cloud is is represented in the end of the month bill. Uh, it could be the over provisioning that you do by mistake or intentionally, but also um, um, issues or inefficiencies that you have with your applications that is running on the cloud because performance issues are typically mitigated by additional capacity. So if you want to have a one single common figure or an indicator that will tell you whether you have an issue or inefficiencies in your, in, in your clouds, public or private, you better look at the cost first. Mm -hmm. Pete, what do you see hanging people up the most? What, what's the most frustrating for people when they, when they deploy to the cloud? I think the biggest thing is knowing where to get started and knowing what, kn knowing how best to take advantage of, of private or public cloud that best suits your needs. It's, it's similar enough to what we used to have in the bare metal data center hosted model that people think it's the same, but it's, it's very, very different. Uh, Sharon just mentioned things like you know either accidentally or intentionally over provisioning, and you get additional costs. You mentioned things like, hey, my bill's not the same every month. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's a very different mindset to take advantage of cloud, but the, the benefits you get at the end of the day are are pretty significant. And and I think it's those sorts of things that you know if you think of think of like market maturity, I think we're just now sort of beginning to cross the chasm with with 
cloud computing. I think it's it's much earlier than a lot of people think it is. A lot of people would say, you know, Amazon's won, the thing is over. But I think we're we're early enough in the stage of this that that's that's not true because so many other people still haven't adopted it. Last fall uh, in November, December, I had the surreal experience of, of being at uh, Amazon reInvent at the Sands Expo Center there in uh, right. attached to the Venetian. And then two weeks later, I was at Gartner Data Center in the right. exact same building. Right. And the very, you could, the, like the, the different mindsets were palpable between those two audiences. The folks in the first audience were the folks like the Netflixes and the Airbnbs of the world who are cloud-born that completely get how to take advantage of the model. Right. Whereas the second group, there was a poll given on the second day, and 40% of that group at Gartner Data Center wasn't even virtualized, let alone right. ready for for the elasticity of public cloud for different workloads. So, and and those folks at that second group, I mean, that represents Fortune 500 IT departments that still have a lot of cash sitting around right. and could optimize the use of that cash a, a lot better and, and change their models so that instead of being a cost center, IT in a big corporation can be an enabler for the line of business teams to help those line of business teams very rapidly react to things going on in their marketplace. But the traditional, you know, traditional IT spending in those big companies has been uh, as a as a cost center. So it's it's a very different mindset that I don't think everybody's sort of grokked yet. But as they begin to, we're going to see more and more companies taking this stuff on. Yeah, not not to get too far off the subject, but I think it's interesting that the Gartner crowd and the, at, at the Gartner conference and the Amazon event show. I mean, two different. Crowds, and I think it was the it was a Gartner analyst who I think now works for OpenStack. He talks he talked about how you know the OpenStack audience is more of a do-it-yourself, forward-thinking, semi-reckless in some yeah. cases, and whereas you know the Gartner the folks at that Gartner uh, show you know are traditional, starchy, classic enterprise IT crowd, deeper pockets, but they can't move as fast. At, at any rate, uh, to get back to our tools discussion, uh, Greg, I want to ask you what, what what do you think hangs people up in terms of um, you know tools and, and getting deployed to the cloud the most when when you talk to cloud cloud customers? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so first of all, totally agree with everything that's already been said. And and just to add on a little bit to what Pete said, I think that uh, that statistic from the Gartner Data Center conference is uh, is very poignant because, as you were just saying, that's the reality of the mass market of enterprise, right? I mean, right. that is is kind of the the majority, right? It's not the early adopters that are looking at doing things with, uh, you know, downloading OpenStack and and trying to really kind of uh, you know be bleeding edge in terms of their adoption of the cloud. So I think Pete's comment on on where to get started is is key. I also think another way to look at that is also um, the unknown that our customers deal with in terms of what are those potential pitfalls, right? So they they do a lot of due diligence and they think about uh, architecting their applications in a way to take a, advantage of a new operating environment um, within whatever cloud provider they're planning to work with, but there's always this unknown of what am I missing, what am I forgetting, and when they go and they flip that switch and turn on that application, things break, things don't work as expected, the end user experience is suboptimal, um, it might turn out that they have a secure vulnerability so it's how can they uh, you know if they were able to go back in time and think about uh, making that migration over again what would be some of the uh, things that they would plan for and consider as a part of that cloud uh, stack um, that they missed the first time and that's just a, a major concern that clearly we're going to see a lot more of in the years to come is that 40% that's not even virtualized starts to move their way towards the public cloud. Yeah, I think that worry that you talked about has held people back even to this late date. I mean, they know this; they know the cloud is where they need to be. Obviously, they need to be virtualized. But what happens when you flip that switch and suddenly it doesn't work? Like that—that that worry has actually held people back. 